In Wednesday's video, I briefly hinted at my philosophy on goal setting. Let's talk about that some more. Okay, so I know that I've talked about before lowering your expectations and how that is a major philosophy that drives my life. Now, for goals, it's kind of similar. I try not to set goals because for one thing, that builds up an expectation in myself. And for another thing, it limits my potential of what I can do. I'm going to segue into talking about Conan O'Brien here for a second. And yes, they're still sending me Rolling Stone, despite the fact that I still have yet to renew my subscription, which I never got in the first place. In that Rolling Stone article, Conan O'Brien says that his major life goal was to be on The Late Show, which he achieved and was on for, you know, seven months or so. Now, the thing is, he got fired from his job and he could have run off and slinked away and had his tail between his legs. But what he did ultimately was surpass all of his own expectations and has gone far beyond what he ever expected to be able to do on The Late Show. But had he settled for his goal, which was to get on The Late Show, he would never have gotten to where he is now, despite the fact that he got fired from The Late Show and there was other extenuating circumstances that got him to where he is now. We won't talk about that. Basically what I'm saying is I don't set goals for myself because it limits the possibility of everything that I could possibly do. Or at least I try not to set those goals. More like I don't set long-term goals. I'm a really, really big believer in the idea of living in the now, living in today. There's a huge power and a happiness that comes from living in the moment, in today, not worrying about tomorrow in any negative sense or positive sense. You just don't think about tomorrow. There's a study going on right now that is attached to an iPhone application and basically the iPhone application asks you a few simple questions throughout the day every once in a while. And it asks you a few basic questions like, you know, what are you doing? When was your last exercise? What did you eat last? How long did you sleep for the last time you slept? Etc, etc, etc. But one of the questions is, is your mind wandering? When's the last time you let your mind wander? And another question is, are you currently happy? What the study is showing, and it's still a currently ongoing study, so it hasn't been com hasn't completely come to this conclusion, but what they are showing is that there is a di direct correlation between happiness and letting your mind wander. And it doesn't matter if that wandering is a positive one or a negative one, if you're worrying about tomorrow or if you're just daydreaming about some random event that's going on. Basically what they're saying is that if you live in the present, if you live in the now, and you're not wandering away in your mind, then you're a happier person. Now, if, now, of course, that's certainly not an easy undertaking to have, to live in the present. What does that mean exactly? How do I not let my mind wander and go elsewhere? But it can happen, I'm sure. I'm certainly not saying I'm an expert at it, and I'm certainly not saying that I've got it perfected it in any way, shape, or form. But, you know, it's there, and it's what I try to live my life by. In the moment, in the now. And you should, too. My problem is basically this, in my half cup of life cereal, I only have 80 calories, so it says. But that doesn't actually realistically reflect what I'm going to be eating and consuming. The beef that I have with the education system is that it's built to produce a product, like I will come out as some kind of product that then can be sold on the market for a job. But really, the product that I want to be is a knowledge-absorbing human being.